Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 47 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Retro Synth, which is a new uh, synthesizer that's included with Logic 10. And it's a really simple uh, instrument as well. It uh, emulates kind of the classic sounds of uh, analog synths, uh, wave syncable synths, uh, wavetable synths, and FM synths. Um, so it's a really simple synth, and so I, I figured I'd do this synthesizer first because it's it's also a really easy way to kind of teach uh, synthesis fundamentals as well. So uh, one thing I do want to preface is that this is not a complete walkthrough in any way. This is more or less an overview, uh, but I do want to give you some of the basics of synthesis uh, along the way. So even if you know nothing about synthesizers, uh, you can still uh, get something out of this uh, out of this video. So. All right, uh, so the first thing uh, to talk about is that the Retro Synth has four different modes, analog, sync, table, and FM. For now, we're gonna start with uh, analog, but all four of them are, like as far as the parameters are concerned, the vast majority of the parameters are the same. It's more or less just the oscillators that change from mode to mode because each of these different types of synthesis uh, generate sound uh, in a different way or modulate uh, the oscillators in a different way. So let's start with uh, the analog uh, mode. Now, if you're unfamiliar with uh, how synthesizers work and what the different parts of synthesizers are, uh, the main element of a synthesizer that generates sound is your oscillator. And typically your oscillators uh, come in four main, there's four main waveforms for them. They're typically sine, triangle, square, and sawtooth. And these four waveforms have four different um, kind of tonal qualities to them. Um, the analog synth only has three of those. Uh, there is a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, and a square wave. Uh, does not contain a sine wave. Um, and the, the the difference between the tone of these four uh, waveforms is in the number of overtones that they contain. A sine wave has no overtones. A triangle wave has a few overtones. Square wave has every other uh, overtone in the harmonic series. And then the sawtooth has all of the harmonics in the harmonic series. So as you go up that list from sine to sawtooth, the tone gets usually brighter, bitier, uh, kind of grittier and fuzzier and more complex sounding. So the sine wave would be the simplest uh, waveform that we can have, but it's not here in this uh, in this oscillator. Uh, the simplest waveform we can pick is the triangle wave. So uh, just real quick, I want to show you just this is just the basic um, the basic stock sound uh, that uh, that you'll hear when you open up the retro synth for the first time. And that is actually not at all the sound. Let me just go back to the factory default here. Let's try that again. It's a really simple polyphonic sound. Um, so let's start with the oscillator. Like I said before, the oscillator is the element in the synthesizer that generates sound. Um, typically, uh, most synthesizers will have multiple oscillators. Here we have two uh, waveforms we can pick from. They're calling them shape one and shape two. Um, what we can also do is we can adjust the blend between the two oscillators. So if I just want to hear number one, I can pull this up to oscillator one. If I have to pull this down to oscillator two, I'm just going to hear oscillator two. So let's start with oscillator one. Uh, we basically have three main shapes. Uh, you have uh, trying, uh, excuse me, a sawtooth that sounds like this. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and turn this filter off here. We'll talk about what that does later. So that's our sawtooth. You pull this up, we get the square wave, which is a little kind of almost brighter, but not quite as complex as the as the sawtooth is. little more hollow sounding and as you pull this to the right you're actually uh, you can shorten the up pulse of the square wave now if you think about the square wave as just an electrical voltage if you think of you know think about going back to uh, the analog realm where you know the oscillator is actually outputting a voltage and then you're amplifying that voltage to get sound um, if you up if you shorten the up pulse of the waveform, you are lowering the overall voltage of the uh, of of the signal. So when you lower the voltage of the signal, you're going to get less lows and a more a thinner sort of bitier metallic tone. So starting on a full uh, you know 50 50 
uh, square wave, it sounds like this. And as you pull that to the right, the tone's gonna get thinner and thinner. This is a really common technique in synthesizers that's called pulse width modulation. And then there's also a uh, noise generator. It basically just outputs uh, white noise. So I'm gonna go back to the, the sawtooth. Let's take a look at the second oscillator. The second oscillator gives us uh, four options as well. We have a triangle, sawtooth, and then square wave. So instead of a noise generator, we have a triangle wave, which sounds like this. So it's a lot simpler, uh, a lot less complex because it doesn't have as many overtones as the sawtooth of the square wave does. Now the great thing about this is we can blend these two oscillators together and um, it, you know, I'm gonna choose two different waveforms. I'm gonna stick with the sawtooth up here and I'm gonna stick with the square wave down here. And so I can blend these two together to get a little bit more complex tone. <laughs> and you can choose how much of each one you, uh, you'd like to hear. Another thing that you can do is you can tune the uh, second uh, waveform up or down in semitones or in scents. Now, as we've talked about in some previous videos, a semitone is one twelfth of an octave, so there's 12 semitones in an octave. It's the same thing as a musical half step, you know, going from C to C sharp, that would be one semitone. Going from C to G, that would be seven semitones. So as you pull your semitone tuning up, you'll hear the, the pitch of wave two. you'll hear it move up or down. So what you can do with this, what I like to do is I like to tune one of my oscillators an octave above or an octave below the other oscillator. So that's what I'm gonna do with wave two. I'm gonna tune it one octave higher, 12 semitones higher than uh, oscillator one. So I get a little bit of the low octave and a little bit of the high octave. And likewise, if I tuned it down an octave, it's gonna kind of reinforce the bass a bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back up an octave. You can also adjust the tuning of oscillator two in scents. A scent is essentially one one hundredth of a semitone. So there's a hundred scents in a semitone. So it's a way to kind of fine tune the oscillator. Um, this is useful because as you uh, pull two oscillators apart from each other in, in sense, you create sort of like a, like a, almost like a chorus effect because they're slightly out of tune with each other. Not like really, really out of tune where it's gonna cause dissonance, but just slightly out of tune to where you can hear a little bit of a, a, like a, a ensemble or a chorus effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tuning of uh, shape two, of oscillator two up uh, 10 cents. <laughs> And again, it doesn't sound out of tune, it's just a little bit more chorusy than before. There we have a bit more of a colder sort of tone. Here we have, you know, up tuning this by uh, 10 cents, we get a bit of a, a chorus effect. Whoops, not 40. Let me just go ahead and type that in. There we go. So bump that up by 10 cents, a little bit more of a chorus effect. <laughs> All right, um, you can also adjust the amount of vibrato you want. Uh, by default, vibrato is paired to the modulation wheel, so the amount of vibrato you hear uh, is going to be uh, controlled by the modulation wheel. So right now it's at 0.62 semitones. So if I start with the modulation wheel down, we get something like this. And if I pull it up, you can exaggerate that a bit more if you want or you can make less out of it. And like I said, by default, this is uh, vibrato is paired to the modulation wheel, but I will show you how to, uh, how to change that. Okay, so now that we've got the oscillators out of the way, let's move down to, let's, we're gonna come back to all this other stuff in just a moment, but let's go down to the uh, settings tab here. Uh, the settings tab brings up a lot of kind of global controls that uh, control the whole the whole synthesizer as well as continuous controller controls. Um, so 
a couple of them that we're seeing here, I'm going to just go ahead and pull my vibrato all the way down. A couple controls that we're seeing here are uh, the modulation wheel controlling the filter uh, cutoff of our filter, aftertouch controlling the filter cutoff, and velocity controlling our wave shape. So if I go ahead and turn my filter on, if I move my modulation wheel up and down, and if I make a little bit more out of this, we can control our filter cutoff with our modulation wheel. Now obviously the filter has to be on for that to work. And if you don't know what filter cutoff is, that's okay. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, the same thing goes for aftertouch. Aftertouch is when you press down the keys and then press harder. So if I hold down the keys and then press down even harder after I've already pressed the keys. That opening of that filter is caused by key pressure. It's caused by me pressing down on the uh, on the keys harder after I've already uh, played the note or the chord. So I'm going to go ahead and option click on that as well because I want to turn that off. And then you can also make velocity control which wave shape you're on. So uh, now velocity is going to control uh, our wave. <laughs> So if I hit the key harder, we're going to get a different, a uh, little bit different waveform than I would if I hit it soft. Now you can actually customize what all three of these controllers go to. It's just by default it goes to filter cutoff or wave shape. There's four different options that you can choose: uh, filter cutoff, wave shape, uh, and it's, it's actually the pulse width of the uh, of the the square wave. It doesn't actually take into consideration the uh, sawtooth or triangle waves. Uh, the LFO rate, which we'll talk about in a moment, and also the vibrato rate, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, this up here was not the vibrato rate. That's actually the vibrato amount. So we'll, we'll get back to that in a moment. So just for now, I'm going to turn, um, turn off the filter, and I'm going to turn all the three controllers off just for now. Uh, let's take a look at the global controls. Almost all synthesizers have global controls, and they usually have, have to do with the tuning of the overall synth, um, things like voice detuning, um, the number of voices that you have, pitch bend, things like that. So let's start here with transpose. Uh, transposition, the transposition feature basically allows you to uh, transpose the entire synthesizer up or down by up to two octaves. So if I want this to be a little uh, an octave higher, I can choose plus one octave. <laughs> And if I say minus one octave, it's going to go down an octave. So if it's more of like a bass type instrument, you can transpose it down. Um, you can also tune the entire synthesizer up or down in cents. And you'd think, why the heck would I ever want to up tune or down tune my synthesizer? Um, the reason for this is that if you did what I did before, where I tuned my second waveform up 10 cents, um, the entire synthesizer has been actually the the what well, the, the actual perceived pitch that we hear is going to be shifted up by five cents. Now the way this works is when you detune two oscillators, our ears perceive the middle of that detuning as the kind of the root the root tuning. So like I said before, if I have oscillator one at a fixed pitch, oscillator two is 10 cents higher, we're going to perceive the overall tuning of the synthesizer in the middle at five cents. So what we can do to make sure that the center um, frequency of the, the, of the synth is right where it needs to be and matches up with the tuning of the song, what we can do is we can compensate for that 10 cent um, detuning by detuning the entire synth down by five cents, so we're you know we're shifting it up by ten by five cents here, because of the detuning because we hear our, the frequency in the middle, and then we're gonna detune the entire synth by five cents to compensate for that. So our synth will be still perfectly in tune even though we've detuned the two oscillators. <laughs> Um, you can also set how much you want your pitch bend range to be. I've actually turned off my pitch bend because I'm not using it, so I'm not going to bother with that. But you can go up to two octaves, up or down. Uh, the voices is the voice count. This is the number of voices that you can uh, play at any given point in time with a maximum of 16. Um, you can also set this to legato or mono, 
With mono and legato, you can only have one voice at a time. So with mono, if I play a note and then try to play another note, uh, the second note I play is going to cancel out the first note I play. So here's the first note, and then the second note, and then the third note. So you can't have uh, more than one note playing at a time. You think, why Why would I really want to do that? Um, the advantage to monophonic synths is that they are a little bit more useful for leads and arpeggios and things like that, especially uh, when you use legato because uh, unlike mono, well, first let me show you what mono does. If I play a series of notes one after the other in mono, the volume envelope of each note restarts every time I press another key. With legato, the volume envelope only restarts when I lift my hand and repress the uh, repress a key. Uh, if the notes are played close together, they share a common volume envelope, and therefore they're, you're going to get a little bit more of a smoother tone. So legato is really nice if you're trying to pay, play like fast arpeggios and things like that. <laughs> Or if you're trying to do things like trills. So it's really good for kind of melodic uh, ideas, whereas, um, you know, polyphonic modes are, are more better for chords and things like that. Um, voice detune detunes uh, the voices of your synthesizer. And basically what, what that does is it takes what we did here, this 10 cent detuning, and goes even further than that. And the more you pull this up, the more sort of chorus effect that you're, uh, you're gonna get from, uh, from your synth. So with this down all the way, whoops, let me put myself back on 16 voices there. Get a very cold tone. As I pull that up, we're gonna get more and more of a chorus effect. If you pull it up too far, though, it'll just start to sound out of tune. So you got to be careful how much you use that. Um, one thing that one uh, other option, uh, one other parameter that really plays into this voice detune is this doubling switch. If you turn doubling off and voice detune all the way off, it means you're just hearing two voices, one voice for the first oscillator, one for the second oscillator. You're gonna get a very cold, very boring sound. Um, if you pull this up, you're, it takes the oscillators and doubles them up on top of each other. So instead of hearing two oscillators, you're actually hearing four oscillators. And then if you take into consideration the detuning, as well as my manual detuning, you can get a really, really nice rich chorus effect. And then if you also use this stereo spread effect, um, it will take the oscillators and the frequencies and kind of spread them across your stereo image. If you take this down to zero, it's a very cold, very center sound. If you pull this out, or pull this up rather, you get a really wide uh, stereo effect. So that's the global controls. Uh, I'm gonna keep that uh, just like that for now. So next, let's talk about um, some of our synthesis modulation um, parameters here. Almost all synthesizers will have filters, uh, LFOs, and envelopes. Um, let's start with filters because filters are one of the most common types of synthesis modulation, one of the easiest ways to change your tone. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the filter. Um, filters, if you're unfamiliar with what a filter is, a filter is a module, either a hardware or software device, that can um, cut out uh, and attenuate certain frequencies um, in your signal, whether that be high frequencies, low frequencies, uh, mid-range frequencies. Um, and there's different types of filters. Uh, the, the types of filters that this filter has are low-pass filters, that's all the LPs, high-pass, band-pass, band reject and peak. And those are pretty much the main four or five types of filters that you're gonna see out there. A low pass filter cuts out the high end, 
but maintains the lows. And that's why it's called low pass because pass means allow. So if you're if you're if it's a low pass filter, you're allowing lows while cutting highs. Likewise, if you use a high pass, you are allowing highs while cutting lows. If you use a band pass, you are allowing a mid uh, range of bands through while cutting highs and lows. And if you use band reject, you're cutting a middle band of frequencies while maintaining highs and lows. A peak filter is a lot like just boosting a band in an equalizer. Uh, if you boost up the band, you just, you know, it doesn't actually cut, a peak filter doesn't actually cut frequencies. It just boosts frequencies around a, a, a center frequency. So, um, the most com really one of the most common types of filters used in synthesizers is the low pass because it can be used to really warm up uh, a, an overly bright signal. Um, so for instance, uh, let me just turn the filter off and let's listen to what our, our tone sounds like. <laughs> It's not too bright, but if I turn on the uh, the low pass, it's going to get a little warmer. Because we've cut out some of the high frequencies. And likewise, with the high pass, the opposite's going to happen. We're going to lose some of the low end. We're going to lose a lot of the low end there. And there you go. Now, these different um, decibel values refer to the slope. So if you have a low pass filter with a 24 dB slope, it means that you're losing 24 decibels of, of signal per octave. Whereas with a 12 dB slope, you're losing, oh, let me go back there, there we go. With a 12 dB slope, you're losing 12 decibels of signal per octave. So basically, just to simplify it, the higher the the slope value, the more steep the uh, the st more steep the cut is going to be. So I'm going to go with a 12 dB low pass. Uh, now there's two factors to take into consideration, at least within this filter, uh, and that is the cutoff frequency and the resonance. The cutoff is actually it's basically where where the signal starts to lose signal it's 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 not actually exactly where the signal starts to lose signal it's actually where um you, you you've already lost three decibels of signal so the cutoff basically determine it's the left and right it determines you know essentially where you're hearing signal start to drop off at or at least again like i said before the cutoff is technically where the signal's already been attenuated by three decibels so you can pull this right you can pull this left you can get a little a softer low pass a little warmer low pass just by playing with the cutoff the resonance is essentially the up uh the up basically i can't really see up and down because i can't really go down any further but resonance uh is caused by feedback so let's say that i have a cutoff frequency and by the way this filter doesn't actually specifically give you what cutoff frequency you're at it just gives you a value between you know i think just one and or zero and one yeah uh, but let's say, for instance, I have a cutoff frequency of you know 500 hertz. Um, resonance is when you boost the signal of the cutoff frequency, say 500 hertz, back into the filter over and over again. It's like a almost like a like a almost like a feedback loop almost. Um, and so you get this boost in the signal at the cutoff frequency. What this usually causes is a bit of, uh, at least when it's in the higher range, a bit more of like a high range shimmer uh, in that um, that area of, of the signal. So it's a way to still cut signal with a low pass, but then simultaneously boost the signal just before the cutoff. So if I pull resonance down, I get this. Then if I pull the resonance up, so you can kind of accentuate the frequencies, um, you know, just before the cutoff slope. Other things you can do here, uh, there's a, a key slider. The key slider controls uh, what's called key tracking. And key tracking is when you can vary the amount of a filter across the keyboard. So if I pull this all the way down, the filter is going to be the same no matter where I play on the keyboard. If I play low or if I play high, it's going to be the same. And actually, let me just pull the cutoff down a bit. Here we go. Low, medium, high. It's essentially the same. If I pull this up, 
the higher I play, the more open this filter is gonna be. So lower frequencies are gonna be more filtered, higher frequencies will be less filtered. So if I start, if I play low, versus playing high, the, up, the higher keys on the keyboard have less of that low pass applied to it. So that's what key tracking does. I'm actually gonna pull that all the way down. Um, all right. There is a filter LFO as well as a filter envelope. And essentially what these two knobs control is the amount of signal um, that it's, it's essentially the amount of modulation that's going on in the filter based on the LFO here or the filter envelope. Let's start with the LFO. If you pull this up, this means that the filter, the cutoff frequency of the filter is going to be modulated by our LFO down here. Now, if you're not familiar with what an LFO is, an LFO, LFO stands for low frequency oscillator. And it is one of the most common um, modulation uh, control sources in synthesizers. And essentially what LFOs do is they create uh, repeating patterns, cyclic patterns. So if I want my filter to kind of do this back and forth, up, down, up, down, up, down, you can make it do that. And that's what this LFO, uh, it, uh, the LFO control here does. It determines how much uh, do you want this LFO to control the filter. So when this is all the way down, you hear nothing. When you pull this up, you'll hear the, the LFO modulate the cutoff frequency of the, uh, of the filter. Let me pull it up even more. There we go. Let me just pull it up even more so we can hear it more. There you go. So we're getting a bit of a filter sweep in there. So going down to the LFO here, um, it basically has two modes. It can be synced or not synced. Synced means that it actually synchronizes to the beat clock. And so you can choose musical values. You know, you can say, I want this to be, you know, I want this to sweep every eighth note or every quarter note. And then off is going to give us a hertz value. So basically one hertz means one time per second. Uh, four hertz would be f mean four times per second. So I'm going to go with this, the synced value. Um, this right here controls um, the depth of the LFO that's controlled by a, a continuous controller like the modulation wheel. So when this is up, it means that the modulation wheel is actually going to control how much filter sweep we hear. So if I pull my modulation wheel all the way down and then play a note, we hear very little LFO modulation. But as I pull my modulation wheel up, we're going to get more and more of that filter sweep, much more uh, dramatic filter sweep. Um, if you don't want this on at all, all, all you have to do is basically pull it all the way down. And the LFO will take its full effect on the filter without you having to, uh, to mess with the, the modulation wheel at all. And then you can just control the depth of the overall modulation from up here. Now, if I want a slow, dramatic filter sweep, I can choose something a lot slower, like two bars. This is a really common... Um, really common type of filter sweep where you just have a very, really slow, dramatic filter sweep. So that's just the uh, the rate, uh, and then the uh, you know controlling it with a continuous controller. Now there's also other shapes for the LFO. The LFO has five different shapes. There's a square wave a reverse square wave, a triangle wave, or excuse me, a sawtooth, a reverse sawtooth, a triangle wave, a square wave, and then a unipolar or unidirectional square wave. Um, each of these just have to do with the shape of, of the filter sweep that's produced. So if I choose a, a, a uh, excuse me, a sawtooth, it's gonna sound like this. Let me just put this on a faster value, like an eighth note. There we go. So here's a sawtooth. If I pull 
go over to a reverse sawtooth. It's more of like a ramping effect. Triangle is more of a kind of a, a gradual up and down effect. Square wave is going to be kind of like an on and off, a uh, very, very um, kind of stuttered effect. And then the uh, unidirectional square wave is going to be similar to the square wave, but just not as uh, strong of an effect. One of my favorite ones is the square wave because I like creating really fast um, kind of like stutter effects with it. The only problem is you have to make sure you play the notes at uh, the right time because if you're a little bit off, the actual motion of the LFOs of each note will be off because this LFO is a, uh, a polyphonic LFO. And if you don't know the difference between a polyphonic LFO and a monophonic LFO, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll talk about it later when we cover uh, one, uh, one of the other synthesizers. Um, the other thing that we can use to control the filter is an envelope, and that's this filter envelope right here. Um, with the filter envelope, um, we can pull up the amount of the modulation here, and we can create um, basically an envelope shape. Now, if you're unfamiliar with envelopes, most envelopes have four stages. They have an attack stage, a decay stage, a sustain, and then a release. Uh, the attack is essentially how much time it takes to get to the peak value. So this is going to essentially be how much time it takes to get from, um, you know, basically from, you know, no filter to filter in our case. Actually, from filter to open filter. And you can see that the attack time here says... Um, 2300 milliseconds, so approximately 2.3 seconds. Um, the decay time right now is at 2000 milliseconds, so about two seconds. The sustain, unlike the attack and decay, has nothing to do with time. It has to do with what is the amount of the signal, the amount of the, the you know, the depth of the filter when you're just holding the keys down after the attack and decay stages have, have gone through. So if I hold, just hold the keys. <laughs> That's the sustain. So you can hear that the attack kind of sweep in, the decay kind of sweep out, and then the sustain point is where I'm holding the keys at. Now, there's also a release stage. The release stage has to do when, when you let go of the keys. The problem right now is that when I let go of the keys, there's no residual signal going on after I let go of the keys. And that's because my amplitude envelope, my volume envelope, or some people call it like an amplifier envelope, um, doesn't have a release time. So if I just pull out the release a bit, we'll have a we'll have a sound that's that kind of has almost like um a tail to it when I let go of the keys. <laughs> It takes a, I've already let go of the keys. It takes a while for the signal to completely die out. And so we can have our filter completely close up when I let go of the keys. So I let go. And you'll hear the, the signal of the filter close up. You can also set the, the depth of the filter envelope to be in the negatives, which basically does the, the opposite. You know, instead of starting as a closed position and then an open position, it would start it with, a clo with an open position and then move to a closed position. All right, um, I'm not gonna use the filter envelope, but I do wanna move on to our amplifier envelope or amplitude envelope, which is just a global volume envelope is all it is. Um, one quick way to get from something that sounds more like a synth lead or a bass to something that sounds more like a synth pad is to pull up your attack time and then pull out your release your release time. The decay time doesn't really matter so much, but um, by making the sound fade in a bit more, because th this uh, envelope controls volume, um, if by making it fade in a bit more and fade out a bit more, you can make this sound more like synth strings or a synth pad or some sort of, you know, ambient, um, you know, harmony or chord uh, synth. And then you can use that. Let me just pull that 
back a little bit. It's a little too long. Um, you can use that in, in conjunction with your LFO. Let's say with our filter sweep here. Let's make this a real slow filter sweep. And we get this nice dramatic uh, filter sweep pad. <laughs> And you can also make uh, velocity be a factor as well. If you pull velocity down, it's not going to matter how hard or soft you hit the key. The volume is always going to be the same. If you pull this up, um, it will basically make the synthesizer's volume react to, uh, to velocity. So I'm going to put that toward the bottom, actually. All right. Um, other, a couple other things that we can go over here. Uh, there's just a basic flanger uh, unit. It's just a, a flanger effect. You can uh, adjust how much flanger you want to hear between none and 100%. So if I pull that up, we'll start to hear the flanger in there. And a flanger is a lot like a, almost like a moving chorus effect. Um, and then the rate just uh, controls how fast you hear the flanger. So I'm going to go with a, like a slower, a slower uh, flanger effect. There we go. Um, on, let me just pull this release in a bit. It's a little too long. There we go. Um, Another thing we can do is we can introduce a sine wave into the mix as well. Uh, with this all the way down, you, it's basically you're just hearing the signal of these two oscillators. If you pull up the sine level, it adds a sine wave uh, at the note that you're playing and kind of reinforces the bass a bit. So you get a little bit more uh, bass reinforcement. And then the volume controls just a master volume control. That's it. Um, the only other thing that I really need to show you in the, of the modulation parameters is uh, the glide parameter. And so I'm just going to turn off my filter and my flanger. Uh, I'm going to change my envelope, my volume envelope, to be more like a lead type uh, instrument. And I'm also going to set the voices to legato. Um, because glide doesn't really work very well with, with polyphonic instruments. It really works best with um, with monophonic or legato instruments. What glide is, is it's essentially just the glide time between notes. And so if you pull this all the way down and then play two notes, the two notes immediately jump you know, to each other. You start pulling this up and you'll hear some glide between those two notes. So it's really cool to make sort of gliding um, um, uh, you know, melodies. Maybe not quite that much, but I can pull it down a bit. If you use too much, it's just going to sound really excessive. But I suppose you could use it for, you know, special effects. And then the other thing that I, I forgot to show was the uh, vibrato unit. Uh, the vibrato is essentially is an LFO as well. It's just not a parable LFO. With this LFO, we were able to pair it up to um, pair it up to the uh, the filter up here. With the vibrato, it's always paired to pitch. So if we went ahead and turned on, up our vibrato depth up here. <laughs> We could, let me pull it up even a little bit more. Um, we can change the shape of our vibrato. We can change the depth uh, that it's controlled by the modulation wheel. And we can also choose to sync it or not sync it just like we did uh, with the other LFO. Um, so if I want a, a bit of a faster vibrato, I can pull up the rate a bit. <laughs> Actually, I pulled the depth down a bit. That's way too much.
Mm-hmm. Or if I want to slow it down, you can do that as well. And this is why I was saying before, toward the beginning of the video, that uh, vibrato, the vibrato amount is automatically paired to modulation wheel because it's set up uh, to control that here. But you can also set it up for uh, aftertouch as well. All right, so that covers the basics of most of the modulation um, you know, um, units here and the basic analog oscillator. Um, what we haven't covered yet are the other three modes, the sync mode, uh, the wavetable mode, and the FM mode. The good news is that all of the modulation um, sources uh, are essentially the same. The only thing that really changes from mode to mode is the oscillator. So let's move over to a synced oscillator. The, the, the actual layout looks a lot like the, actually exactly like the, uh, the, analog, um, the analog mode, except that the oscillator changes a bit. So the difference between an, a regular old analog uh, emulating oscillator and a synced oscillator is that when you sync two oscillators, you essentially have like a master oscillator and a slave oscillator. And what you can do is you can detune one or both of the oscillators and the signal of the slave oscillator, the actual cycle of the signal, the shape, will match up with the, with the master oscillator. So it allows you to create some more um, complex uh, looking and sounding uh, waveforms uh, than you'd otherwise be able to uh, be able to create. Um, I will make sure I put a, a visual up on the screen just to kind to kind of uh, um, visually show what I'm talking about. But again, syncing oscillators is a way to take two oscillators and sync the cycle of one oscillator to another oscillator. So what I'm going to do is just choose two saw teeth like uh, like we have here, and um, you can adjust how much you want to hear of each one. So this is oscillator one by itself. <laughs> oscillator two by itself. And the reason why oscillator two sounds higher is because the sync is up. And this is actually controlling the pitch of that particular um, oscillator. And it's it's not, it's not it's a little different than controlling the pitch here because if you take, you know, under anal the analog mode, if you just up tune one of the oscillators, you're just gonna hear harmony, you know? You're just gonna hear one oscillator playing a bit higher than the other. <laughs> you can play in harmony. In a synced oscillator, um, you're f when you detune an oscillator, it's shape two here, when you uptune the tuning of shape two, um, you're physically changing what the output waveform is. You're creating a brand new waveform. So uh, the great thing about synced oscillators is there's a whole variety of tones that you can get out of syncing the oscillator. So all the way down is unsynced. And you start pulling this up and you'll hear almost these sort of tonal shifts, but the actual root note that you're playing will remain the same. So essentially what you're doing is when you pull that sync up, is the fundamental frequency of the note that you're playing is the same, but kind of the overtone series is being shifted up and down. And to just to demonstrate that, I've, I'm going to pull up this EQ here and turn on the analyzer feature, and then I'll show you the signal with sync all the way down, and then I'll pull it up, and you'll see the signal, uh, uh, you'll see the overtone series, the overtones above the fundamental kind of shift up and down. So let me just find a way to fit this all on the screen. So it's all the way down. So you can see that the fundamental frequency down here is still there, but the overtone series has been varied by detuning uh, or uptuning the, uh, the second waveform. So that's what a synced oscillator does. And again, all of the other um, features are the same as in the previous mode. Under table mode, um, this is essentially giving us a wavetable oscillator. Wavetables um, are a way to uh, have a set of preset uh, oscillator waveforms that are different than the main four oscillators that we're used to using. They're different than sine, triangle, square, and sawtooth. So instead of just getting the basic sounds on our two shapes here, we get a whole pl plethora of different uh, sounds that we can pick from. 
So let me just pull this up to oscillator one. So just here, oscillator one. We start on something that's kind of like a sine wave. It's got a little bit of a of like a hiss to it or a little bit of a ring to it. As I pull that up, you'll hear um, the wavetable shift through a whole series of uh, of different uh, different waveforms. <laughs> So you can kind of stop on a sound you like, do the same thing with the uh, second shape, and then blend those two sounds together. Actually, let me put myself back in polyphonic mode here. There we go. Now another thing that you can do here um, that we couldn't do before um, is we can modulate, well we could, actually we could do it before with the analog mode, but we can modulate the shape of oscillator one with an LFO or a filter. So that basically means that now this, this uh, you know, the waveform selection can you know, modulate back and forth based on our filter or our LFO. So if I pull this over to the LFO side, and I say I want to mo I want to modulate this every you know quarter note. That means that this shape knob is moving back and forth in a triangle wave shape at the pace of one quarter note. And the the depth of it is going to be controlled here by you know basically how much of that modulation do you want to hear. Here it's just kind of creating sort of a scrambled sort of sound, but that is uh, that's another thing that you can do here. But yeah, the the main difference between a wavetable and our analog mode is that instead of just getting three or four oscillators to pick from, you get a whole you know a fader going from basically zero all the way up to one with you know many many different uh, options that we can we can pick from. All right, the next mode is FM mode, and FM stands for frequency modulation synthesis. Um, FM synthesis is essentially when you have two or more oscillators, and you can route the signal of one oscillator into another oscillator. Now, in the FM world, oscillators are actually referred to as operators, and there's two types of operators. You have modulators, and you have carriers. Um, your modulating wave, if you think about this as an electrical signal, um, the modulating wave is the wave that is routed into another wave, and that wave it's routed into is the carrier wave. So the carrier wave is is the, the waveform that's sent out to the output, that's the signal that you hear, and the modulator is an operator that's being routed into the carrier. Um, so the way uh, this works, what I'm going to do is to, just to demonstrate, I'm going to pull these other four knobs down, and uh, if we just go up to the modulator and play a note, it'll sound like this. Kind of like, almost like a sine wave. If I pull it down, again, a lot like a sine wave. Um, if I pull up the FM knob, this is how much frequency modulation we're getting. So essentially, how much signal is being routed from the modulator into the carrier. Now, if we're only hearing the modulator, and we pull the FM uh, knob up, there's not going to be any effect on the tone. But if I go down to the carrier as I pull this up, you'll hear that the tone has been modulated. Uh, modulated. So if I want to hear a little bit of the modulator and a little bit of the carrier, and then also apply frequency modulation to this uh, to the signal, you can just pull this up. And essentially what you're doing with an FM synthesizer is you are uh, introducing extra overtones into the uh, into the signal, kind of like we did um, you know with um, with the synced waveforms. So if I pull the FM amount down and play a note and then push, uh, the FM uh, knob up, you'll see more and more overtones being created. So 
So there's a whole vast variety of different tones that we can that we can pick um, pick in there. Uh, those added overtones are called sidebands. So sidebands are just added uh, overtones produced from FM synthesis. The other thing that you can adjust is the uh, the actual tuning of our uh, modulator wave. So if I just go up to the modulator for a moment and I pull this harmonic knob up. It adjusts the, um, it adjusts, let me just pull this down for a moment. Yeah, you'll see if, if I'm just on the carrier wave and the FM amount is down, the harmonic knob does nothing. But when you push this up to the modulator, we can affect uh, the tuning of the modulator. Now, the reason why this is called harmonic is because we are actually choosing what harmonic in the harmonic series the modulator is on. So uh, if you're not familiar with the harmonic series, it usually you know starts with a note, then an octave, then a fifth, then a fourth, then a third, then another third, then a minor third, uh, and so forth and so on. And so the harmonics get closer and, and closer together. Um, in harmonic are uh, is basically like a fine tuning knob, so you can get in between the harmonics, and then the shape is just the waveform of the modulator. So, actually, it's the it's, I think it's the shape. I think I want to say it's the shape of both the modulator and the carrier. So it you can start with a signal that is a, a bit more complex as opposed to starting with just two sine waves. So let me just come up with a, a bit of a, a sound here. Just pulling my octave down a bit to create kind of like a dirty bass sound. Pull the volume down a bit. There we go. Um, so that's the um, that is the uh, FM mode of the retro synth. All right. So this video is a, a closely approaching almost an hour long at this point. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the video there. Um, keep in mind that this is just an overview of the retro synth. There's a lot of uh, little things that I, I skipped, and I don't want you to think in any way that this is a complete tutorial on, on synthesis and understanding synthesis. I'm basically just showing you uh, the basics in you know one hour's time. So, so I hope you enjoyed the video.